So Apple's introduced two new iPhone models of the iPhone 6S and the iPhone 6S Plus. Uh, cosmetically, not a whole lot different, but internally there's uh, a lot of changes, and there's been some hardware changes that integrate with new software changes in iOS 9 uh, to enable some new interactions through what they're calling a 3D touch display. 3D touch display allows different levels of pressure to kind of focus and activate different uh, triggers uh, that will enable different functions in inside third-party apps and in Apple's apps. The phones start at the same price, $199, $299 for the 16 gigabyte model and go up from there. Let's demo some of the new features uh, in the phones here. Uh, one of the first things is that the new 12 megapixel camera also allows capture of 4K video. So in addition to your regular stills and 12 megapixel, you, all, you can also now shoot gorgeous 4K video. Uh, the samples that we've seen on the phones here so far have been pretty excellent. This is combined with uh, combining 4K video with uh, 3D or with optical image stabilization on this new display. You can see it's actually quite good. Uh, probably won't translate because we're downgrading obviously 4K through a screen and through the camera, but you'll have to take my word for it, it's pretty solid. Uh, you can also zoom in on the video for the first time because there is enough resolution to do so. You'll notice it's still quite sharp, uh, not a lot of uh, artifacting or edging there. So that's the new 4K video. In addition to 4K video, Apple's also introduced a new type of camera format or image format that they're calling live photos. These live photos, if I open an image up here, will allow you to touch on the image and play back the moments just before and just after the image was taken. You do this using the new 3D touch display, which is sensitive to levels of pressure. And this is actually a single image file, 12 megapixel, with a sidecar file of motion before and after. It takes up roughly the same space as two 12 megapixel images in a standard format. This is an effect you can turn on and off. If you're shooting an image, and your live photo icon is enabled here, then it will take a live photo. If it's disabled, it'll take a standard photo. So if you want to save space, you can turn it off. Otherwise, it'll take a, about two images worth of space to shoot a live photo. Those live photos can be used, obviously, on the home screen as well. And if you force touch on your home screen, it will play back the same way it does in your photo library. You notice there's a sort of back and forth uh, looping motion there. So that's the new live photos. Now, one of the other hardware upgrades is inside, there's now sensors that determine the amount of pressure that you're putting on the screen. This enables new interactions with a technology they call 3D Touch. And 3D Touch has three, essentially three levels of pressure. There's the standard tap, there is a press, and then there is a full press, or pop, they're calling it. On the home screen, uh, these <laughs> represent in, a, in sort of quick actions. And a quick action would enable you to say, touch on your music icon to immediately start playing Beats 1 or search for music or play the last thing you were playing. If you use it on maps, you can get directions home. You can mark your location or send a location or start a search immediately rather than having to dip directly into the app and search around for that feature. Same thing for phone. You can use this to send to people that you, uh, that you speak to regularly, your favorites. So those, are, those quick actions are accessible from the home screen. But these levels of touch are also present inside apps. So if we go to Messages, for instance, uh, you'll see there's a number of actionable links here. Normally, we would tap on them, and it would take us to Safari or somewhere else. But you can tap on the link and hold it down to do what's called a peek. And a peek will show you a uh, pop-up window that runs Safari inside of it, allowing you to quickly look at what that link will display and then let go to let it go away. If you'd like to actually read it fully and, and experience it in Safari, like normal, you can pop it or press further, and you'll get it open in Safari just like normal. Apple's also added a small uh, UI affordance up here, called Back to Messages, which will bring you right back to where you were. And this works with a variety of callouts. Um, here's a flight, and this flight gives us our flight schedule here uh, through Apple's card system. And pop it open, and we get the full card that we can then take action on. You can also use a series of quick actions. So, for instance, if I wanted to open this up and slide up, I can copy that and then paste it somewhere else and send it to somebody. And once I swipe up, I can then tap that to take that action. Another example of this, in a URL, if I swipe up, 
I can add it to my reading list. Just open the link in Safari or copy it. Drag it down and make it go away. If we open up Mail, it's another place we can see, for instance, here's an invitation to eat at a restaurant. So if I open my peak, I can see the potential place where that event might be. If I swipe up, I can create the event or I can open my calendar. You see that right there. Of course, if I pop it, it just opens right in my calendar and I can add it to my, to my uh, events schedule. So that's peak and pop, which are enabled by the 3D touch display. Uh, the new iPhones are, as I mentioned before, cosmetically very similar. Uh, one of the new things that they do have uh, is a rose gold. And the rose gold finish uh, is the new finish in addition to gold and silver. So there's your uh, new rose gold finish. There you are. And those are the new iPhone 6S and 6S Plus.